There you are. Hello. There you are. How are you doing? You well? I didn't, I didn't get a notification, but also when I tried to join you live, it was we have networking issues, and I think because everyone's at home, the kids are on Zoom team classes, and I'm online. I think I've just came off my Wi-Fi, so I could join. Uh, yeah, I know that. I know that feeling all too well. We've got. Um, We've got the 4G connection, which we've actually had like into the house. We've got an antenna on the roof and everything. And that's mine. No one else allowed to use that. <laughs> um, yeah. But then everyone's using the BT one, which is rubbish and, um, you know, just causing no ends of issues. It's uh, somewhat oh. fun, anyway, isn't it? I know, I know. <laughs> but you're here now, which I'm is here now. Yes, I am. I am. So it was a bit Excellent. stressful. The usual typical last minute things that happen and then you get on <laughs> best laid plans though mm. isn't it <laughs> right well I'll just rock right on in to introducing you to everybody um in case anybody who doesn't know who Julie or Jules what do you prefer Julie or Jules I get I get both actually it's weird because Jules is my family nickname and it was only used to be like my parents and in my life half of things that called me it but because I then called my business it I need to get used to lots of other people calling me it so I go between Julie and Jules it's both oh, <laughs> oh well <laughs> we'll stick with Jules then yeah. so Jules is a, a female founder obviously of a fantastic uh, branding and design company horrifically luxurious as well so um, she's here with me today to talk all about her business startup her personal experience and uh, how she got into the whole branding and design and getting into you know publishing even several books one of which I've got here <laughs> <laughs> all about Instagram hashtags I think it's like the only book that sits on my desk all the rest of them oh. sit on my bookshelf so that um that says a lot for it <laughs> so um I'll hand over to you to do a proper introduction now and uh, maybe you can kick off by telling us how you first came up with the idea for your business. Um, yeah, so I, I've been a designer all my career, um, straight from school and college, not done anything else. Can't actually ever imagine myself doing anything else. It, it absolutely is my passion and I'm really quite kind of fixated on design being done right and design, design being done well. Um, but for... At the start of my career, I was in design agencies in there for um, the first 10 years or so until I had um, my first daughter. Um, and then I kind of took a break from it um, while the kids were young. And at that point, this is kind of like showing my age, but it was in the kind of late 90s, early 2000s, and it was very much a dog eat dog world. And you were working all hours, very male orientated, very competitive, and once and I was fine to do that when I was in my all through my twenties and things and I could work all the hours but the minute I had my daughter I just thought I can't I can't stand this this pace. And I did step away um and, and kind of built my first business and not a lot of people know I had a first business before this and it was in wedding stationery. Um and that worked for a while. But just different circumstances, and again, also probably where I made all my mistakes not to know to make this time was that they weren't priced right. Now, how the amount of work that I put into them, of course, because as a designer, they had to be the best papers, and it was G.F. Smith papers and things that I used. Um, it was pre-internet. I actually do believe if I had that business now with social media, it would be a success. But it was pre-Facebook days, um, and uh, you had to pay for your advertising and do the exhibitions and they're just a running costs. And I didn't have a very nice husband is probably the way I'll put it as well. So all sorts of things <laughs> combining together. And um, once I had my second son in, in the hospital recovering from um, having him when I was getting messages from Bride saying, can I get thank you cards? I just thought I can't keep doing this. Um, so actually the split from him kind of like projected me getting back into um, working life and it, then I was four years away from working in the design industry and that's quite a big gap because at that point there's changes to platforms you use and, and, and it was very much coming of the first wave of web design clash and how graphic designer and very much design for print um, and design for branding that's background but they were then wanting to be a web designer developer 
all sorts of things now actually it's you, know, yeah. you need to be a graphic designer web designer social media manager marketing person and all UX designer into one but I managed to get a job in the corporate world um with a in the civil service and at that point it was perfect because it's very much advertised as um work life family balance and how and supportive and also as a single mum at that point so that's absolutely what I needed um and then actually I loved it because it was um, a big change being in-house as opposed to like working on the agency side. Um, and I got in there at a time where I could really build the team up. They didn't really have a brand as such and I got to completely rebrand them, build up a team, now have a, um, now manage that team. But I've now been, and it gave me that stability when the kids were young and I needed steady income. Um, yeah. But now 10 years on, I'm at the other side of the cycle. And I'm just like, I've done all I can here. Can't do any more. My team are like a well-oiled machine now. They are um, self-sufficient. But also when you go through several sets of reorganisations and justifying why your team exists and you know, how cutbacks and yeah. things, I just thought I need to be in control of my own future. And also my confidence was starting to fail in there because you constantly get questioned like and I don't when you work with a lot of people who don't see the benefits of design or even why design needs to exist they just the amount of times I've literally had someone say to me can you go and pretty that up for me can you jazz this up it's literally the things that will send me going off my head um because they don't value has anyone it. ever taken something though and like printed it off and started doodling around it as well I think that would look better. <laughs> yeah, i will come back to my screen and sit behind me and going, can you just move? And the minute somebody puts a finger on my my screen, I go ballistic. Now, and and if you know me well, I, I'm very expressive face. And now with, with all the kind of Skype meetings and now they can, people in London were Skyping me going, Julie, fix your face because we can so tell what you're thinking just by your eyebrows. <laughs> so, the eyebrow, the rogue eyebrow. <laughs> yeah, the, and I'm just like, mm -hmm, really thinking what the it's usually what's going through my mind and I think it's quite hard a corporate environment and constantly getting that battle of we could just outsource you I don't agree with what you're saying so I'm just going to go and hire an agency and I'm going you can't you need to go through me so I thought if I and I think as well hit my kind of 40s now and just think what do I want to do for the next 10 years and I actually sat down and thought do I see myself in this organisation for the next 10 years my answer was no but then there was a big scary question of what do I do? <laughs> and at that point, I was 10 years out of being part of the design industry, world's contacts and things. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of, I was actually down in London at the staff conference, listening to a whole lo load of stuff I policy work on. I have no interest in, to be honest. I just thought, I'm going to do something now. And I went back to my hotel room after um, right for drinks and stuff and I sat on social media and I basically started an account in the and just launched with no planning yeah no forethought just <laughs> um and I prompted my best friend as well who used to be my ex-boss in there who knows what I'm like and she actually is the one who said to me because I didn't I, I didn't want to be a agency I didn't want to be doing graphic design commission work and my dog has started snoring mm. so if you hear <laughs> <our dog>, right? <laughs> um, and she went you need to focus on branding that's 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 what you're good at and I was like yeah no and I am and I know that from working with my team like whenever there was like branding work done some of the team were quite nervous at taking it on or they'd quite happily go and take a video was that's what I love to do um and I mm -hmm. think that's from my initial training so I thought I'll focus on branding. I'll just focus on logo development and all the assets needed for that. I'm not really interested in designing your your brochure or your magazine or your flyer or your leaflet because there's not money in that. There is not money in that because there's too many online DIY um, platforms there is. out there now. Absolutely. And I mean, I have had a couple of people ask me how much I cost to design a leaflet. They just about fall off the floor when I tell them. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, quite right. No. No. And so what would you say when you started up? What was your mission from from the outset? What would you what did you plan to sort of bring or hone through your My company? Mission very much was 
I wanted to create quite luxurious brandings, but for people who didn't think they could have that. I I, I see so many women, and I, and I very quickly wanted to focus on working with women. I have had a few male clients, but working with women that they have no confidence in themselves, like they are amazing and they have such brilliant um, skills, but they aren't that confident showing it off. And I think it's through not feeling professional or looking professional. Whereas I've seen the power of when I've worked with somebody and I give them the brand that truly reflects the skills and expertise they have in their business. And all of a sudden they're going out there and like handing a card out left, right and centre, like having one client go on holiday to the card with her and handing them out on her cruises and stuff because she was that chuffed of it. Whereas without, before, you wouldn't sell yourself if you didn't feel proud of what that looked like. And it's people underestimate how transformational having that brand image can do. So that essentially was my core thing that I wanted to concentrate on. And also selfishly for me, <laughs> I get a big kick out of creating the brands that I do and it makes me happy doing this kind of work. So I wanted to do work for the next 10 years that will make me happy and not just a yeah. means to an end. It's definitely wise. Have you, have you veered at all off that path at any point like especially in the early days so do you, you know was that mission kind of wavered it you going to where the work bit. was because it wasn't obviously it was a very slow burning start and because also I had suffered from self-doubt myself because I'd been away from working with strangers for so long I've worked with the same people more or less and you get a kind of protection bubble yeah. when you work in-house and I think more in confidence I when I wasn't getting maybe a lot of the um, brand projects and people did come to me going, oh, I've got a logo already, but I don't really have the other elements or can I just tweak it? I did. And I always regretted it. And I now mm -hmm. very much, or I actually did take on graphic design commissions, but then I realised, my God, I'm spending like six, seven, eight hours in this and I'm, I feel like I'm only charging for two because I'll just chuck a run at the price. But so I very quickly learned what not to do and I think basically your first year of business is learnings on what not to do the next year <laughs> I think you need that you need to get that. pretend first year don't you to get, get all the mistakes out yeah <laughs> yeah exactly you need to make all the mistakes don't you it's like you know experience nightmare clients make all the mistakes yeah. um you know get all the price and mistakes out the way and it's 100% like what you say, you know, so many people watching this are probably thinking the exact same thing. When it comes to pricing, it's knowing what to charge and learning to not go over it or getting that experience of knowing how long something is going to actually take you and allow for revisions, especially in your line of work, you know, mm -hmm. or even stay. So many people forget at the beginning to say that includes one revision or two revisions or whatever, yeah. you know, because you can be going back and forth yes and people till the end of time <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah and also people don't look at them properly until it's designed and this is something i know from my day job as well as you can see i need to have signed off text before that comes to design to start work and they go yeah it's signed off up to director level no it's not the minute you start that director then looks at it and went oh now we've seen sight of the design we'd like to move this and move that could you just make that bigger mm -hmm. and you're just like oh my god and then they're changing text and you, and you literally become text editors which is not the design function and I used to say to my boss we're the most expensive content editors you ever hire because that's what we're being used for more and it's the same in business um I think I'm now getting really super clear I've changed so much my onboarding stages and I'm learning even now because that's when people who are not committed or clear in what they want have become my worst nightmares because they're the ones who procrastinate or put a pause in mm. a project that I am halfway through and can't build the final payment for because they haven't often changed direction for their business, whether they're away on holiday or whatever, or changed their minds. I only work with people who are absolutely 100% no, this is what they they want to do. Um, and again, that's just learning from working with, and, and I've learned not to be so nice. It's, and it's horrible because it's totally yeah. in my nature to be nice and be helpful. But oh my God, have I been walked over several times by people oh, yeah. who've just spent, oh, you're nice. Oh, I'm going to exploit that. <laughs> I'm going to get as much as I can from you. And then I'm the one who feels absolutely 
get trained to the end of oh it. yeah 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 and no I've, I've definitely had that before mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah I've had that in like agency style business it, uh, all the time yeah it's mm-hmm. it's so easily done it's so easily done I mean you, you touched on at the start um about self-doubt I mean that first initial step when you decided to do it although you did say you just went and whacked on in set up social media at what point did the self-doubt start to kind of creep back in and did it ever sort did you ever find it sort of overwhelming at times yeah um and you know it's it's and I see it crop up so often and see I absolutely believe if you're a creative person you're filled with self-doubt it is because it's such a subjective subjective thing and especially design and again it's part of my processes if I cannot back up the visuals and the designs I come up with with a strategy behind my reasoning then people will walk all over them and it becomes a what they like and don't like scenario and it's personal preference which is not the basis of design and self-doubt again for me has always came in with the clients who I have ended up working with that I probably shouldn't have that there were some red flags but I ignored them Um, or I felt empathy towards the situation and maybe discounted my prices oh my god were they the ones that come back and because they they don't value what you're doing then they don't even appreciate that you Mm -hmm. have discounted then they're the ones who go who have the big big asks and change the scope or are unhappy with what you've produced and they and I have been in tears my god there was one at the end of the year and I actually got to the point if it wasn't that I had another couple of projects running concurrently which were going really really well then mm-hmm. I would have been starting to say to my husband I don't think I can do this I'm, and maybe I'm not as good as I think I am maybe I am actually crap maybe what they're saying is true and and then that can be really quite hard to deal with it, yeah. thinking, and, and he just looks and she's going I keep doing, I don't know how. and I have luckily um, some really good business buddies that I'll call them to support on who yeah. I'll message and I'll go I've had a client say this to me do you think that's a fair response what would you say <laughs> <laughs> um, they are invaluable like if I didn't have them and I have done with you as well I've messaged you going oh my god this has happened yeah you need people who understand exactly because yeah. and there's a group of there's there's um three of us work together really closely and we've got a whatsapp as well and if and it's happened to, we all have very different businesses but we have the same issues with clients which i think is quite funny as well and it's often we are very good at going right well what you just need to say is you know how you have to be clear with this and you have to be clear with the scope of your work and this is more and, and, but I can't do it for myself but if I say it to them they can come back and tell me well actually they're going past their boundaries um, and I think there's wee things I often do like I now keep a folder when I've had really lovely comments on the end of projects and things people have said yeah. it's really good to sometimes remind yourself of those things that people have said because you tend to kind of brush over them and not take it in um, and really really remember the negatives um, and I think when you are a person who um, takes what people say to heart like I, I really feel like I've let somebody down if a project doesn't work out and sometimes it doesn't and we have to admit, actually, I'm not the right designer for you. If I'm, this isn't working mm-hmm. out, then we just need to put a pause on it. Um, but that's okay, because you probably shouldn't yeah. have worked with them in the first place. And yeah, it's, it's yeah. hard. <laughs> it is hard. It is. It's important to sort of realise that, isn't it? It's, I almost, and I say this on repeat, it's like we're institutionalised through life primary school you know that there's right and wrong and you know 100% is the best and and it is it's that perfectionism thing and and so we think that you know if we're not getting all the work Mm -hmm. then there must be something wrong and and it's not that at all it's that you know especially in design it's like you know not everyone's gonna like the same styles and yeah and yeah Yeah. it's totally been kind I see Jerry's put how dare they say you're rubbish (laughs) (laughs) Well, people have, <laughs> um, and yeah, it is. It's it's like oh, I mean, I I and and again, the touch on the prices. Um, I recently I have to take great delight. I I have that. I was a real kind of like 
moment in my business where I think I felt I, I felt so satisfied and I constantly have people who say oh I love your work love what you do ah, yeah you're a bit pricey now how can like, this is my this is can you do, the, do this and I've worked with this client who again was not really kind of my ideal client but was referred to me by another contact who worked with them took them on initially happy with my cost because it was based on project so they 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 were happy with that but then mm-hmm. very quickly wanted to start changing adding in extras and changing it and emailing it ten at night going hi can you just help me out got a really important meeting can you design this powerpoint and the new branding for me i need it for friday morning and i'm looking at it at 10 at night and the night and i'm going <sighs> and i did get caught in that and it's during covid well actually if i do this now then it puts in a good light, do it this, this once. But then I've done a couple of projects, thought so I need to actually tell him this is going to be extra. This is not part of the mm. <laughs> project. So yeah. I emailed and said, just to let you know, I've done those two pieces of work in addition to the project. Because you've came to me for such a tight timeline, it goes on to my early rate, which is this. And they came back and they went, oh yeah, appreciate that. And it really helped us have it for the meeting. However, you get the however, um, oh. at this rate, this would make your daily rate such and such. And I'm thinking that's not the deal rate actually. And he went, which <laughs> puts puts me you in line with what I would expect to pay an agency. That one comment, I literally started swearing at my screen because I just and he really intensely interviewed me before he hired me. I don't know if it was a man, isn't it? How it was a man, and he, he did say, <laughs> and, and he was saying, um, and I'm thinking to myself, I have over twenty years experience in this industry i've worked in agencies i have managed teams in the agencies now how it's in your level how dare you if i want to charge the prices i price you want my skills this is how much they cost and i went back and i replied that going actually that's not my daily daily rate my daily rate is this much but because you came to me with less than 24 hours notice and i required to work up till midnight on it you went on to my expedited early rate I says, however, if mm-hmm. you can book me in, in at least four weeks advance, you can go on my day rate. So he came back and it's the whole like, oh, uh, this has to be mutually beneficial for the two of us. We're a startup. Now, how one of his clients his presentations for was a national, multinational organization. So to help with the startups thing. And um, I can't give you four weeks notice, but can I send you work ad hoc on a weekly basis uh, uh, on your day rate? like a, a few hours at a time and I actually kind of really read it back oh and he discounted my dairy so he took my dairy took 200 quid off it and then said I can offer Red you flag. this <laughs> uh-huh, I can offer you this much I can't plan the work ahead I still want to be able to send you when I want and I just thought no no I don't yeah, need your work. Absolutely. No. Um, so I went back and I just went, it's no. the way it's like, I'll just step in, I'll just step into your shoes and run your company for you. <laughs> uh-huh. And I just thought, if you want to use me, then you need to be, and, and because I was, I did have other work at the time and I just took great delight in going, no, with the other clients I have, it's not fair. They're paying my rate. They're booking me in advance. So I'm currently booked up until, December and this was I think September he was emailing me um I said so no and never heard from him again <laughs> yeah and I'd well done you honestly two and a half months at that point I've been working with him every week back and forth and then the minute he challenged me in the prices I didn't budge he didn't continue to work with me but I actually felt a kind of sense of relief I didn't have to continue working with him Sorry, big side tangent, but I had to. Boun- <laughs> no, I mean, boundaries, they are probably the hardest thing to get back into line. If you yeah. just let it slip, if you just give a little bit, they'll take, they'll be like, it's like a tug of war, you know, it's like, what else can I get? You know, it's just, oh, it's, yeah. It's so and I realised my mistake. Another, was, mm-hmm, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, know, I, was just, I was just about to say, I, another thing I see all the time in marketing and design this sort of industry is the amount of people who think that agency sits above an individual yes. you know it's like they put they give the provenance to the agency it's like oh but I could get an agency for that it's like well off you go because what you'd pay for isn't always the top dog is it it's the person mm. that's fresh out of uni that maybe doesn't have the 
you yes, know, expertise. I mean, but why, why then is that placed way above someone who's been in the industry for 20 plus years? It's like, yeah, exactly. And also, they seem to think, well, even if you're freelance, and I don't ever call myself a freelancer, because I think, again, people mm. just think, oh, you'll be cheaper. Because mm-hmm. we still have tax to pay, national insurance contributions, and how our equipment, our subscriptions, we still have to pay all those same bills pension that, that mm-hmm. how other businesses have to pay. So why should we be cheaper? I mean, I actually laughed like once I'd um, taken away, if, if I had worked for the date he wanted me to work at, I would be earning less per hour than I, I was like, now 10 years ago I just thought just get a, a life now and I yeah it, it just always mm, made me yeah no, well done you <laughs> Laura think good for you I think the more we do the less perceived value we're given and that yeah. is a hundred percent totally true and it's something I stopped doing as well as over delivering over deliver a little mm-hmm. but only a little I was being far too generous and then people then expected even more of me or didn't appreciate that it even was more than they were initially meant to get in the first place. And I think that was a wee bit, again, of self-doubt over my pricing. What if I sent them something and thought, is that all I'm getting? Is that it? So I would kind of over-deliver it in that. But now I'm getting more confident. No, the stuff I do is good and the stuff I do and the feedback I've had from the clients, I now know that I don't need to compensate, probably. Yeah. Yeah. That is a, it's a great place to get to in yeah. any business um as a service business you know when it's around pricing it, it, it can be so difficult so how would you feel that social media has helped your company in the whole startup process I mean you said it was one of the, the first things that you did <laughs> yeah it was and, and I, I laugh back at how little I actually knew about Instagram um when I first started and if I didn't have my Instagram account I wouldn't have my business um it is really where I have not just found clients and that took a while to get the clients but the people I've met on Instagram that have then helped me with my business because Uh it's been the one platform where you can just send somebody a private message and then very quickly get to know how you and I met is just through the how Instagram Um, and I and it doesn't it's not the same in Facebook you can't do that in Facebook so I think if it yeah and Instagram is such a visual platform that for visually led businesses like mine, it's the platform you have have to be on to, to get that visibility. Um, it's frustrating. Instagram is, I go through a love-hate relationship with it. But um, I actually, it's the clients I have got from it, though, are not the ones uh-huh. who are my biggest visible supporters. It's the secret lurkers. I don't know if you find that as well. It's the ones who always look at your post and follow you but they never like it they never comment on it they never share it but all of a sudden you'll get a wee drop in your email going hi there we follow you for a good few months and I love your work it's so inspirational and then the <laughs> work you've done you're going I don't even know who you are and then you'll go and look and you'll see they've been following you for about a year so it's it's those kind of relationships you when you're not getting the likes and things like that, you have to remember it's, it's you need the people who are your big cheerleaders to help get you seen yeah. But they're not your yeah. customers, ideally. Yeah. People are always silently deliberating, yes. aren't they? It's, <laughs> it's hard to remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And I've quite learned that Facebook is not my platform. I don't like Facebook mm. at all. But Facebook has its uses. I like Facebook for me to be part of groups where I can learn and I yeah. can get information. But for me as a platform to sell, I think... The only people who like my posts on Facebook are friends and family that are following it. it all my yeah. customers are on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Facebook there as being one that, you know, you personally use, um, but it's not necessarily where your customers are coming from. Is there any other platforms that are an absolute no-no for you? Maybe you've tried them before and they've oh, not worked. LinkedIn. I hate, hate LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't stand it. It's oh. it's like a, my suit's better than your suit. It's yeah. like oh. <laughs> it's almost it's like a, it's too corporate. It's too full of the people I'm trying to get away from in my day job. Mm. It's too Snap. it is too it feels very tight and too conforming that you have to be a certain way and communicate a certain way. And I don't like how um, 
I quickly find that a lot of the people in the posts, the engagement is all people who are part of networking groups all liking each other and commenting on each other's posts to boost them. So it's not authentic. The people yeah. who recommend are all bad buddies from... And I'm saying that because I went through so many different networking groups as well to try and find one that suits. But it's it's too work. And it's all... It's too... Middle-aged white male suited is probably the environment that's on yeah. there that I don't want to be part of. I'm looking for mm-hmm. the people who are very different than that to be my client um and uh, it's and they're the ones who have ever had any inquiries through there have immediately tried to negotiate my costs immediately tried to pin me down to to do spec work all the kind of stuff they're not interested yeah so, but you're not interested in yeah so I very it's it's there but I think I go on it like once every two months <laughs> to be honest, yeah that's about it. yeah what about tiktok you love TikTok. Oh, see, well, TikTok's a strange one because TikTok, my son is mortified. I'm on TikTok, can I just say? <laughs> um, and, but I, I'm on that because I couldn't create my videos on Reels. Um, I had mm-hmm. no music function. So I would create them on TikTok and then just copy it across. I don't get much engaged. I think I'm far too old for TikTok. Um, I did have somebody no. say, no, I did have somebody comment because somebody placed <gasps> at a granny home. No way. <gasps> what to find out? I'm going, Granny? Granny? No. <laughs> um, it's like, who made you the gatekeeper of TikTok? Exactly. <laughs> it was like a 12 year old child that had commented that, no, how, um, and it was a shame because I was actually feeling good. It was, it was funny when I got my hair cut and I was getting cut short and I actually felt quite good in that post until somebody commented that I do have grey hair though, but in, in fairness, but um, I, I do find TikTok quite a, a platform people are quite rude on. They are quite. Um, judgmental on it um, although I think TikTok has changed with Covid there's much more people my age and even my 30s mm-hmm. now on it than ever before so I think the under 20s have lost their platform a bit um, I think they're a little bit annoyed about that <laughs> they've taken it over they don't keep um, quiet about it that's for sure yeah um, so I use it as a means to an end I'm not trying to grow TikTok I'd rather, I get much more engagement on the TikToks I create on my Reels than I do um, mm-hmm. in, in TikTok. But I like the, I like the yeah. um, functionality to create the videos and do the editing and things. It's easier and less glitchy than the Reels. But one thing that does annoy indeed. me in TikTok, and this is purely from a design point of view, I hate the limited fonts and colours in TikTok. I can't do my yeah. brand style on it. So sometimes mm-hmm. what I do is I do the video, but I publish it privately so nobody can see it, but I can still export it and then put it in reels to do the text. <laughs> Pin the ass, but it works. <laughs> yeah, make it take longer. Just... <laughs> but that, that, I suppose that's the danger, isn't it? It's like because of you, the nature of your business, it's like, gosh forbid to use the, yeah. the crappy set of fonts that are already <laughs> on there. Yeah. Is it, is it four fonts they've got over there? I noticed that the other day. And the colours are crap. The colours just the colors make, are me, It's like taking a, a, a chalk, then a chalkboard kind of thing. Oh, it drives me nuts. I can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> they are terrible. They are absolutely terrible. Um, if you could go right back to the start of your business and do it all again, is there anything that you would do differently? Um, I don't know actually if I necessarily would because I feel I have to go through the mistakes I make to learn from them. There's, I haven't had any big disasters. Maybe if I had a big disaster, I would, or I'd invested a lot of money in something that didn't work. But I think everything I've done, I've then learned a lesson from that then helped me progress and move move mm-hmm. forward. I think maybe one thing I'd do is not wait so long to sit and try and figure out stuff myself but get help sooner. I think that's probably one thing that's delayed my growth the way it has and it's only once I started actually doing that and seeing how quickly things then progressed made me realise how important investing is in my business to help me get to the next stage yeah. I need to go to. I think that's probably what I'd change. Yeah, no, it's it's so funny that, isn't it? It's like the, the perception that you know, we should wait until, and we always promise ourselves, don't we? It's like, when I start seeing more money or when I start mm-hmm. getting more time or when I sort this out, then I'll, like, get the help, get the support, invest, hire people. Yeah. But actually, it's the it's the doing those things that's going to give you the money, the time. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. And it's, 
it's like chicken and egg, isn't it? It's just totally, totally yeah, it's, egg. it's quite a funny, funny thing. So, what was the first thing then that you outsourced in your business? Um, I did two things at the same time, and that was I invested in professional copywriting for my website, mm-hmm. and I also um, worked with a lady, Steph, on my business operations kind of side, and that mm-hmm. just transformed how I viewed my business because it's you need that person on the outside and and, and I've I, my parents both had their own business I had a business before I've got a lot of experience there's a lot of things I knew but didn't actually realize I knew that I doubted and actually working with that person to take me through it or I had a couple of light bulb moments one was my pricing when I realized how much I was doing how little and I thought right okay I'm still not doing this right <laughs> and it's having and also making you realize m- where I was maybe spending money on things that aren't actually getting me any return and things that I was yeah. putting not a lot of time into was actually giving me really good um visibility returns so having that person look at the business as a whole everything I was doing yeah. really just from then on I think that's what helped me suddenly get much more concise with with how I ran my business yeah, and the, no. the it, it, sometimes you can. Yeah, oh, sorry, I was just going to say sometimes you can feel like a rat in a cage, can't you? Sometimes oh, when it comes to making yes. a decision. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. And then it is just yourself. You kind of argue in your head. I don't know if you do this. You're working. You're going. Should I do this? No, I will do it. No, actually, maybe I won't do it. Right, I'm doing it today. No, should I? I do this all the time. Do it all the time. And I drive my husband nuts. Like he's like my can I go to and he just goes probably you think it's best honey and I'm just going that's not an answer tell me should I do yeah. it <laughs> again why you need business like buddies to do make these decisions with you rather than your poor other half who just listens to you all the time <laughs> yeah absolutely for sure tell me a bit more about your book because I am intrigued how you arrange your books you've got this you've got um a lot of like self um what, what would you call them so it's the self-written ones the ones that are blank that are like notebooks and stuff the, like that just notebooks and, and uh, um planners and, and diaries and things so this came from a chance conversation at a networking night i went to um and it was a lady who sat across the desk and she just and it's one of those ones it's just like an open chat one and she's saying oh i've just like launched this online course It's in the beta phase and it's basically teaching you how to publish your own branded books on Amazon. And honestly, my ears just perked up. I was like, ah, what? Oh, I need to know about this now. So I got hold of her cat with her name and she's saying, yep, within an hour, she says, I'll do a quick online video and I show you the backgrounds of the KDP and how to set up your account to publish on Amazon. And then you're off and running and it's, they're called low content books. They're specifically called that. This is about a year and a half ago. So now since then, the market has grown so much. And it was great because I kind of experimented and tested and just literally posted some notebooks with covers. Then I thought, I'll do some actual planners and journals. Done a few of them. Yeah. And then actually, and I never, ever, ever had this on my radar, publishing an actual book. But I just thought, I started thinking about what, struggles did I have setting up my business what would have really helped me if I had just had the one book to resource to really help me and not spend hours and hours downloading loads of freebies to find their crap and searching hours on the internet and constantly on my phone looking for hashtags and I often get flashes of ideas when I'm out walking my dogs and I'll go out walking the dogs and it's, it just seems to clear my head and then ideas will pop in my head and the amount of times I had to get my notes out and my phone or speak notes and stuff and I can run in the house and I was like Steve Steve guess what something I do I publish a book and he's going what's there oh my god right okay what now and I'm going I'm going to do this so then it was just and it is at the time I started having it in the background but I had client work on so I couldn't get the time to do it and then obviously uh-huh. when um, COVID first happened literally three former projects were all lined up fell away and I had a gap and I thought right I'm going to do it I'm going to do this now um and I just started, and again, I, I hated downloading some of the guides and help. And then you'll suddenly find they were recommending hashtags like, say for me, brand designer, locals. And I'm going, well, they're crap because they have like 10 million hits each. So that's not going to get yeah. me any visibility. So 
I then started like, narrowing them down, narrowing them down. So as much as I can, the hashtags I've put in are all lower niched numbers of hits and things yeah. to help people get some visibility. And also just then, <laughs> it was only meant to be purely a hashtag library. That's all it was going to be. But then as you do, you start going, but you can't really start using hashtag until you figure out some of the brand strategy. So then you need to figure out your vision. And you can't do it without knowing who your ideal customer are because you want to get in front of them and not your industry. Yeah. And before I knew it, I suddenly had to create a whole front section to the book <laughs> to then explain <laughs> how to use the hashtags. Um, but I think it then became a better resource because of that. And I'm glad I took that extra time to think about it. Yeah. And yeah, so that, that's how the book came about. <laughs> It is. It's a positive, like, one-stop shop, like you say. I mean, I'm just flicking through it just now, so I'm just in the index here. So, yeah, you've got um, engagement trackers in here as well, um, about getting bland, uh, brand clarity, um, you know, your mission statement, your business aims, your brand personality, your what your buzzwords are, what your core customer brand values are, your ideal customer all of that stuff, how to use the hashtags and what their purpose is, mm -hmm. any quick tips. But then, you know, you've got hashtag libraries here for creatives, lifestyles, days and seasons, businesses, uh, blogs, podcasts, socials, beauty, hair, wellness. It's just, yeah. And then there's there's space in the back for writing down notes and things as well, which is just, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Clearly sold. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what the thing is as well? Like actually, I, I, I was gutted because it has been, it's been one of those slow burners. Um, obviously, there was no fanfare when I published it. It was literally just who my few followers were and things. And it, but it's gradually, I think people are finding out about it. And it's going up the algorithm on Amazon and it's selling um, frequently. But I actually got a two-star review the other day and I was absolutely gutted, absolutely gutted. Because again... Was it by a competitor by any chance? I don't know. <laughs> but they really put... It would be that guy, that guy that you... <laughs> he was emailing you. And I can't even respond to it. And it was... And it, and the, the 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 reviews really do help me boost up the the algorithm and mm. and I actually put great book but about eighty pages are purely just list of hashtags and I almost wanted to say that's the title of the book that's literally what this book is. <laughs> so <laughs> what part of that was was not giving it away? <laughs> and I actually and and I didn't expect to pay thirteen pounds for it and I think do you know what there's a lot of people who sell hashtag lists for 20 30 50 pounds now a time this is low cost and you're getting a whole section on brand strategy at the front of it which is often people's first introduction to even what brand strategy is about and the amount of comments i've had from people saying this really helped me actually clarify my business and stuff and what i'm doing as a bonus to even what the hashtag is and i then had to think oh do you know what at, at least sometimes somebody say, well, actually having a review like that makes other ones look more authentic because if they're all five star, people don't believe that. But there was a wee tiny part of me who was a bit, and I read it literally before yeah. I went to sleep. I seen the review come up and the last thing I did before I went to sleep was just like going, <laughs> just kind of like. Well, I still <laughs> review it, so I'm well, going to be giving you a good review. review. That would be good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the sort of person that normally does Amazon reviews, but after you've told me that, damn well will be. <laughs> That's insane. Oh dear. So, if you had one piece of advice for someone who was just starting out, especially um, if they're sort of at the brink of giving up stage, you know yeah. that sort of crippling self doubt, what would it be? Oh, um, I think just to know that they're not alone everyone thinks like that I have I have had a week that I've wanted to give up where I've been so tired and, and working the early hours I think I've said it in a couple of times during this finding the people to support you and isn't necessarily your friends and family actually mm -hmm. I do have a very supportive family who I bore intensively to come and review my work before it goes out to a client but don't rely on your friends and family to like your post and share the post they won't I, I yeah I couldn't none of them do but finding the people who will help you and and jerry's on on um this live and she's absolutely one of um my absolute go-tos now i talk to her every week and just 
those conversations when you are having a bit of a bad day, I know I can message Jerry and just go, Jerry, I feel like crap this week. Client said this, what do you think? Should I just give up? Is this a waste of time? And she'll be like, absolutely not, right? And just gives you that boost. And, and you know, Jerry, she'll just tell you straight, absolutely not. It's funny, um, she's literally just commented, I, I love she- the book. <laughs> Uh, Laura Um, the book's called um, it's all about Instagram hashtag sorry I'm interrupting you there Laura was just asking what the book's called there you go Laura I'll hold it straight so you can read it sorry crack on there Jo so yeah I think and actually at the same time as finding your people but be aware that there is people who will take advantage and I think that's probably my hardest lesson that I have learned I almost got myself into quite difficult situations a couple of times with people who I thought were becoming my friends but actually, I mm-hmm. think just look, look to me and thought, oh, you can benefit me and my business, so I'm going to extract that and make you feel guilty by making you feel like it's because we're friends. So then I feel very difficult to... Boundaries are hard enough extracting with a client. When you cross that over with a friendship, even even harder mm. to get strong and stand up and going, no, actually, you're not going to do that for me. Now, so finding the right people that will help you and being aware that not everyone is your friend for the right reasons. Probably the two biggest things I've learned. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. No, it's definitely important to keep that in mind. What what businesses would you look up to for inspiration? There's um, a couple um, of designers that I really like. One is Fiona Humberston. She's the brand stylist. Um, she actually has a couple of books. Uh, it's how to sell your brand. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to see. There's they're up, they're up on my my wall. I can see it. <laughs> so I know what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. And brand brilliant. And actually, yes, again, that's one I've got. Oh, I I just find it so lovely to to flick through myself and and I'm constantly. I mean, I, I, you'll, you'll see there's. This is so bad. This is my collection of books. I'm gradually building up, building up business books I've got a, a book case and bedroom for my books and business books I love learning and I love because mm. learning something new um, and she does she's really all about luxury minimal brands and she's at the same age as me and has a similar <clears throat> more successful career than mine built her own agencies and sold them and now does these but I feel I can learn from her still and I think that's the thing, you're, mm-hmm. never, you're never that good that you'll never learn from somebody else. Um, and another designer I really like, just to know on Instagram, she's based in America, is Saffron Avenue. Again, just love the style of her work. And I know there's, there's, I don't follow a lot of designers on my Instagram, but I'll follow the ones that I feel I'll get inspiration from and that will drive me to try harder with my designs. I'm never ever complacent yeah. and just sit back and go, well, who know I can turn it, this logo, it's fine. I can't, I'm constantly learning too. And I feel yeah. I kind of need to keep pitching <laughs> to get better. Yeah, no, that, that's very wise actually. Right, we're moving into a little bit of a quick, quick Ooh, fire uh, <laughs> section now for you. I wish I had a jingle or something. <laughs> Jingle, it would be Harry Styles. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's your favourite platform? Instagram. Instagram. Pinterest. Uh, video. Pinterest, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd have to agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, video or podcast? Um, that's a hard one because I kind of do like both. I like the podcast and I like walking the dogs because I can't listen and work at the same time. But video, I can actually kind of have one in the background while I'm working. I mean, so I quite like that. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, live or pre-recorded? So oh, pre-recorded. And Jerry will argue with me. Jerry loves live, right? I, I, I just stumble over my words. This put fear in me even doing this. But um, I prefer pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, filter or no filter? Oh, again, I, I love a wee filter. When you get to my age, you start getting, <laughs> the, start getting the lines. Although, again, taking Jerry's tips, I do, and I'm under the window to, so I get natural light, right? So don't mind that. So there's no filter, obviously, on here, but I have been known to add a wee filter to my videos. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm actually balancing my window that side. And I've got a ring light on that sign to balance it. Yeah, Jerry would be also chuffed. <laughs> uh, daily posting or ad hoc? Um, again, I'm a bit of a mix. I, I batch create. So 
so I'll think about the kind of content I want to put out and I, I'll have a kind of portfolio work, educational work, blah, blah, blah. But I don't plan it out. I'll then decide in the morning what I feel like posting, but choose one of the ones of three designs. But I'm not stringent about, on oh, Monday I'm doing a mood board, Tuesday I'm doing educational. Probably should be, but it's usually <laughs> how I'm feeling that morning. Or sometimes I kind of see what content's out there. And I might be, I was going to post yeah. something very similar, so I'll change it. So I do a bit of planning ahead, but then yeah. ad hoc what I actually post. Yeah, mm-hmm. wee bit of freedom there. Yeah. Um, DIY or outsource? <sighs> Uh, yeah, so there's there's lots of it times. It depends. I know. <laughs> yeah, um, there's lots of times I'd say outsource. Um, but again, there's things I still want to outsource that I can't yet. Like my website, I want to get redesigned. Not at the stage to do that. Then some DIYing my website now. Um, but I outsource my copywriting. I know how to outsource other kind of things. I would. <laughs> Soon to say, I would outsource getting your brands done professionally. Then, once you've got your brand, <laughs> you have yeah. that, but please don't head straight to Canva to create your brand in the first place. Oh, yeah. Actually, I'm, oh, I'm going to do a couple of um, reels that I think might be quite controversial because they're about Canva. And I'm a bit nervous to put them out, but then I just think stuff it, I'll do it. But yeah, <laughs> that's my advice. Get the professional one done first, then you can use Canva. Yeah. Uh, TikTok or Reels? I think I've kind of covered that one. Yeah, Reels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and your favourite binge shows on Netflix? Oh yeah, I have I have two just now. Just finished Bridgerton, it's very good. And um, the um, oh, was it the witchery? Was it the discovery of witches? That's it. So I enjoyed um... the TV series so much that I've just bought the books, which arrived yesterday. So I just started the books last night. So the discovery um... of witches is a good one. I did get so fed up Bridgerton. Watched... Oh, Bridgerton I loved. Although I recommended it to my 16-year-old daughter and didn't quite realise how racy it got because she was <laughs> she's been ahead of me. She kind of came out, oh, Mom, it gets a bit racy. Is that okay if I do that? <laughs> and I also recommended it to Mom and Dad. So... But, um... <laughs> Always watch it first just oh, before you make the recommendation. Uh-huh. Um, I got, I've watched so much TV because I, I have it on my iPad when I'm working and I'll work late into the night and my night owl. I actually watched the entire series of ER from the from the beginning during like from November to December. <laughs> and it was great just knowing what I was putting on. And you could just have one in the background. I can't watch work that'll distract me. Like Bridgerton, I thought mm. I actually get so caught up in watching it. I was actually sitting like this in my at my desk <laughs> doing my work. <laughs> I was too busy watching this movie. <laughs> I fell from literally I went from Bridgerton and it was for me, it was the whole, like, the, the era of it. So I, I literally went from that to Paul Dark, which I'd never seen before, right. and then went from that to Downton Abbey. Oh, Downton <laughs> Abbey, like, brilliant. I love Downton Abbey and The Crown. I really I'm on the, the last episode <laughs> now, and it's uh, I don't know what I'm going to watch after it. You know when you watch for, like, I've watched that era for so long yeah. now, for, like, the last six weeks, that um, I'm feeling a bit anxious about coming out that era when everything's like prim and proper (laughs) see the uh see the actor that's in um downtown abbey he's married to mary is it her name is um as well as matthew good that's the actor's name he's the the main actor in um the discovery of witches so Ah. if you look at the effect oh what's that next and I might fall series, straight into that. They now. go back in time to the 15th century, so you get your period drama as well. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right, so we're into the questions that some people have sent in. And actually, I'll ask you uh, Sean's question first, just because it's on the screen there. So uh, who do you use for uh, copywriting? Or no, sorry, beg your pardon. What do you use the copywriter for? I use the copywriter for my website content. She also helped me edit my book before I publish my book and do my intro. Because I don't know about you, but I, I, you cannot talk about yourself. You need somebody else to do your, your it intro. Can be tough. It can, yeah. And um, she is also going to, starting this week, do my blog posts and newsletters for me because I have long resisted sending out newsletters because writing is not my gift. Visuals are writing as in it would take me ten hours to do something somebody else would take an hour in. So I realise my own strengths and that's not one of them. So I have been slowly building my email subscriptions now. 
but not sending out emails which I should be um so and I'm always so envious of yours because yours are always so beautifully done I'm like oh see if I could write emails like that oh. send them out every week yours are they're lovely yours is one of the few that I actually read because I really enjoy them oh um, is it I do, I, do, I, do, I do really enjoy them and um so I have finally just said right I need to help with support with that and she's doing the first one if I can actually now get it uploaded we'll hopefully get it tomorrow so. excellent mm -hmm. uh Claire's also asked opinions on clubhouse we talked about this yesterday yeah. <laughs> so i am very much a newbie on clubhouse just joined last week um and i'm already what i found that i did not expect it to do is actually it's a brilliant traffic driver to your instagram so within um and also i've started kind of starting you have to join rooms that are quite small to have any opportunity of actually getting to speak it's great to go into the bigger rooms just to suss it out, see what it's like. Um, and the minute that I spoke a couple of times, all of a sudden people were following me on Clubhouse and heading to my Instagram and immediately following me on Instagram. I think I got 30 followers last week just from being on Clubhouse, That's good. which is good. So I thought purely from a point of view of increasing my platform on Instagram, it's a good platform to use. I actually think it's going to be a great platform for me at some point to host the room on. Um, mm -hmm. rather than having it video there's not as much pressure because it's voice um, because that's not something I'm that confident in yet and you can collaborate with people to, to join with you so you're not mm -hmm. doing it on your own um, I am also ready very wary that there's lots of content on there I don't necessarily want to see or hear they've now put this new function on where you can swipe right for rooms that you've no interest in and there's all lots of weird stuff already started appearing on there so I think you have to be very careful to monitor what kind of platform it is. But I've already made a couple of interesting contacts on it. So I'm open, open to learning from yeah. it. I've not quite made my opinion yet, but I will try it out and see. I yeah. think it's going to be huge. I'm reaching because I had to go and do the devil's work. I must be in the 20% of people that don't like iPhones used to have oh. one don't like it uh -huh. and of course clubhouse made me have to iPhone. go mm -hmm. i had to go and order an iphone off amazon didn't i just just to take part uh-huh um, yeah i'm the opposite i am an absolute apple fan so i'm quite happy <laughs> I, i'm i'm like the off i'm just the opposite is it's their brand ethos i go like go. <laughs> that, yeah, some people love it some people don't and that that's the thing you have very strong supporters of it either way yeah. Yeah, Jenny's laughing because I had this conversation with her about <laughs> Apple. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the light. Welcome yeah, to the light. Do you know the thing I missed? No back button. Where the... There's oh, only there's only the home button. There's no back yeah, button. You don't need that. No, you just kind of swipe up and you can go between the apps. It's fine. Once you get into it, it's fine. You'll you should never go back. <laughs> <laughs> you should see me on the kids' iPad, you know, because it's the only Apple thing we've got in the house. I'm like. How do you use it? <laughs> oh, we're we, we are, we are a complete Apple household, I'm afraid. So everything's Apple in this household. I wouldn't let them have a... Oh, yeah. And that's the thing, though, isn't it? Is once you're in, you're in. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the thing. They're, they get you to the point where it's like you couldn't ever come away from it because no. the cost to come away would just be obscene, wouldn't it? I if think you've I... got the iMac and the iBook and iPad and iWatch and i this. Yeah, Steve was saying Steve was very much Microsoft Samsung believer and stuff. And we went through, he went through two laptops before I said to him, get a MacBook for your next device, get a MacBook. And eventually he got like an iMac. And now he's just like, how does I live without this? He's still got that same iMac five years later, which still runs oh, absolutely fine. But don't, do you're it, tempting me here. Oh no, seriously, the amount of oh, updates and bugs and things you get, you just don't get. My last MacBook Pro, in fact, it's in my, my drawer is nine years old and I can still fire it up and use it and it still works. Nine years old and it still works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you definitely wouldn't get that. No. <laughs> <laughs> she was. But then I've gone so far the other way, do you know what I mean? It's like everything's uh, Microsoft or whatever, you know, right mm -hmm. down to the washing machine because the washing machine's Samsung. Right. And my phone's a Samsung, and my TV's a Samsung, and yeah. if the washing machine's mm -hmm. finished, it'll tell the telly, and it'll tell my phone, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too far the other way. 
Um, right. So how long did it take you to move from saying yes to every client to just taking the ones that you knew were right? I think a good year. I think a good year. Although I still turned in a lot of work. I, you will not believe the amount of DMs I get going, hi, how much for local? I, I immediately see that and I half the time I don't even bother replying because it's a red the, flag isn't it <laughs> the ones I if you actually followed me and listened to me you'll know I don't design logos you know I do a full brand um and if you go to my website I tell you that on the website and I put it in every single post that I more or less do so if you're coming to me and saying or even if you went to my website and checked them out and seen that it's all brand packages but are still saying how much for just a logo I don't want to work with you and it sounds some people go oh, that sounds arrogant and blah blah not I just know they're after something that literally costs 50 pounds which is just not my client at all um and you will still get some that kind of sneak in and it's not until I actually get on the discovery call that I start thinking I get the bad feeling and I I yeah. fight my gut feeling and I don't know why I fight my gut feeling but every time I've listened to it I've been right so I it's and again I think when I realized people were willing to wait for me to work with me as well realized there were clients I absolutely wanted to work with because they were patient and wanted to do it the right way if I got people who would I would say unfortunately I'm fully booked for the next few months the earliest start date I've got such and such they'll go oh no I really need something straight away can't you just fit me in can't you just do this then no because that's me doing detriment to my other clients who have waited for me and I don't produce yeah. good good enough work if I'm stressed and I've got too many projects on my plate at one time. I can't. I'm realizing that I need to be able to have a proper amount of time to work on each project properly, um, because design isn't always easy, and I don't have magic ideas popping out my head all the time. Sometimes it literally takes me hours and hours of drawing and changing and going through crappy ideas and putting them in before I'll get to something that I'm happy with, you can present to the client so I need to have a head yeah. to do that yeah definitely and then last question yeah. this is one that I probably would like to know the answer to as well how long does it take you to make your TikToks or Reels each week um I'd say between realistically between filming them is the easy part filming them is quick um it's then the editing and often I don't mm. actually edit in the app. I don't edit in TikTok and I don't edit in Reels. I actually, what I do is I often film them in my stories. And I film in my, so because you can, Jerry, sorry, add a filter. And, um, <laughs> and I can say a sentence at a time, just download and then not save and obviously not post. Um, and then I take it into an app called um, Premiere Rush, which is an Adobe mm -hmm. app. But I think there's a free version. Um, you don't have to have Adobe for it. And very easily you can chop, add, move about, like quicken and edit videos. Then this, what I do is upload it to TikTok so I can add music or any of the effects I need, text or add, upload it to Reels. And that's... And it's, but it's, I'd say it's taken me a bit of learning to get quicker at doing them. A lot of it was learning yeah. now and just, I would see really good TikToks and I'd be like, how did they do that? And then I'd go away and try and figure out how they did that effect to then learn it. And I'm still learning it. Um, but now I'd say a couple of hours a week and I've kind of got them yeah. done. The kids thought it was nuts during Christmas and then we'll be changing outfits and <laughs> like something like, like that. I need the dogs, like, oh, what do you need the dogs for? <laughs> like the <adding. laughs> and now, now mummy boys. It's definitely a way of life, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm bringing the ring light downstairs to the kitchen and all these like, oh, you filming on a TikTok mum? <laughs> and I'm just like, yes. And Stephen will publish it. You need to go on and like it. And it's so funny because I was like, this is the family. Right, guys, none of you have liked my reel today. Go and like it. And then I went, don't just like it and scroll. You actually have to watch it so it registers as a view. <laughs> All the way through. <laughs> and then like, oh, head rolls and stuff. <laughs> Sitting there cringing. Oh, mum. Oh, yeah, I went, put it in mute if you can't stand my voice. But, you know, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's too funny <laughs> oh well 
Oh, well, that's it at the end of the question. So thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. It's been so much fun getting to speak to you. And uh, let me just quickly make sure I was tallying the questions as we're coming in, make sure I've not missed any other ones. Um, Rachel saying loves TikTok, just observe Phil, but learn quite a lot of useful stuff. Yeah. Um, I think we caught everybody else as they were coming in. Um, yep. So that's everything. So thank you so much um, you. for your time. And uh, yeah, it was great, great to have you. I know. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Right. Take okay. care. Bye, everyone. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Bye.